New Orleans Saints roster has not improved yet. Controversial yet. Brave take here. This is Ross Jackson, Locked On Saints podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. So this is from a viewer. A viewer sent me a link and said, James, you got to react to this. We need to hear what the superstar has to say. We need to hear your opinion on this. Shout out to my guy, Jason, for sending this link along. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, a couple of updates. One, if you want to send me a video to react to, the easiest way to do it, obviously, is like Instagram, Twitter, something like that, but I have created a James Scrimetta Reddit page, so go ahead and drop links in there. I'll be checking it out. It'll be an easy way for the community to kind of get together, uh, throw some ideas out there, and I will be on there. So that's a perfect place to do it. Second update. This one's Now, this one's wild. This one's crazy. I'm not even sure how this is going to work. I've created a speaker page. I think it's called. Speaker page, I believe it is. Who knows? You can leave voice recordings on this page. So I want to do kind of like a voicemail, mailbag kind of situation every once in a while. Go in there, bring your voices, bring your questions, bring your thoughts into the show, into the episodes of what we're doing here. So there is a link to all of that down below. Get involved, and we're going to get involved with this video. So, the Saints, my Saints, your Saints, these Saints, I ain't talking Ignatius. I ain't talking Michael. I ain't talking Christopher. I ain't talking Joan of Arc, and I definitely ain't talking Teresa. I'm talking about the boys, the Houdat Nation, these Saints, Derek Carr, Alvin Kamara, Chris Olave, Talise Fuaga. By the way, word on the street is, a commenter told me, it's not Fuaga, it's Fuager. To that, I say, Fuwager, I just met her. Damn, but so I like how Fuwaga sounds, so I'm going to keep saying that. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the video, shall we? The New Orleans Saints 2024 offseason approach may not lead to a better roster, but it certainly gives us an idea about how unsuccessful the 2023 offseason approach was. We got all Okay, yeah, no doubt. We've talked about that a million times. 2023, 2023 last year, the approach was the front office believed that they had the guys in-house to continue the Sean Payton, Drew Brees kind of era. That that was the plan, all right? it was. It's obvious now. That was the plan. Mickey, Mickey believed that he could just keep everything together as long as the core was there, as long as we still had some people who believed in and understood Sean Payton's philosophy and all that, i.e. Pete Carmichael. As long as we had some guys in there, i.e. Ronald Curry, Right, as long as they were there, as long as they were holding the fort down, then we'd be fine. That was proven untrue. It was proven that Sean Payton is Sean Payton. And these guys, Pete Carmichael, who were there to try and instill this culture, they couldn't do it. So after 2023, Mickey Loomis and the rest of the front office agreed it's time to go in a different direction. It's time to move into the next chapter of the New Orleans Saints. We have covered that extensively. We've covered that that... Mickey acknowledged that he messed up. He acknowledged he made a whoopsie poopsie. And he went out of house. He went elsewhere and got new ideas, i.e. Clint Kubiak, i.e. the entire overhaul of the offensive staff. All right? So he has, he has agreed. He has accepted that, no doubt. Now, the part that I don't understand, which we will certainly see in this video, I don't understand how you can believe the Saints haven't improved over last year. Where have they not improved? What have they lost? They haven't really lost anything. If you think about like Michael Thomas, okay? Yeah, Michael Thomas was a former Offensive Player of the Year, but what really did we lose there? As far as on field, not much. No hate. I like Michael Thomas, but you know, as far as the impact and as far as how he was playing and things like that, like the loss will not be felt. Defensively, what did we lose? Nothing, right? If anything, we gained. We gained with Chase Young, okay? We gained with some of our young secondary players having another year to develop. Now, you can absolutely say we lost on the offensive line. You can absolutely say, you know, uh, Anders, Anders Pete walking and Hurst retiring and Ryan Ramchak and for sure. For sure. that I'll give you that. But overall, I don't think you can sit here and say the team is worse. Not to mention, if you look at last year, last year Alvin Kamara missed the first three games because he was suspended. Derek Carr was hurt twice. Marshawn Lattimore was hurt towards the end of the season. Last year, we had a lot of issues. So the fact that we're not starting with Alvin Kamara injured, we, Derek Carr is not injured. Derek Carr is not learning a whole new city, a whole new community, a whole new locker room. 
you know, he's got his his time with players over the course of last year. So that that's better. You know, Marshawn Lattimore's not hurt. Like all that is a positive. So I don't see how you can possibly look at this team, this situation, this roster, and say, uh, actually, it's worse. I think across the board is better. All that and a little bit of land yet for you on today's episode of Locked on Saints. I usually skip the intros, but I'll, I'll, I'll leave it in. You are I'll Locked leave. on Saints, the okay, daily New Orleans Saints okay. podcast. I, I part of need... the Locked On okay. Podcast Network. Ladies, Your team I I every know. day. I know what I'm watching, lady. I don't, I don't need you to tell me. What is good, Houdat Nation and Houdat family? I'm your host, Ross Jackson, New Orleans native. Your New Orleans Saints expert and credential member of the media covering those New Orleans Saints. Okay, I'm going to try and skip the intro and try and get to the actual topics here. Free agency, the draft, all that. I got to say that I don't really okay. feel that the Saints roster has made a significant or even a marked improvement in terms of its talent based on unknowns that we currently have being add, added to this New Orleans Saints roster. But I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing. I think it's bad to get worse. I don't think it's bad to stay basically the same. Um, I think that it also goes to show the approach that the Saints have taken. Okay, I, I, okay. I don't, I don't think philosophically that's, that's, that's correct. You can't, we're going to get, now, I mean, this could get into a crazy space here. I don't think you can, how am I going to phrase this? I don't think you can not get worse, but also not get better. I, I think staying the same is not possible because you have to factor in all these variables. Like Even if the roster stays completely the same, how do you quantify players either having another year to develop? How do you quantify players having another year to understand themselves? or understand each other, or build communication, or build chemistry. Like, there is no such thing as staying still. There is no such thing as being the same. You, you can't inherently be the same. You have to get worse, or you have to get better. That, that's, there is no, like, well, we're the, we are the exact same. Okay. If you agree that the Saints are not worse, they have to, they have, to have improved. They have to be a little bit better. And I do think the Saints have gotten better. If the Sa if you say the roster is the exact same, which it's not, but you could say the roster is the exact same. Even if you do that, you have to give us a bump for the coaching staff. Just for that. Nothing more. If we didn't add any pieces, which we did, if we didn't add any pieces, you could still say, well, the Saints should be better just because of the coaching staff overhaul. Right? Let's pretend that the coaching staff didn't turn over, which it did. You still have to say, well, the Saints probably should be better because the things I, I just said. Alvin Kamara is not suspended. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore is not hurt. Derek Carr is not hurt. And Derek Carr is not playing his first season for this team. Okay? Derek Carr knows who the players are. Derek Carr knows his teammates. That alone gives you a bump. So now if you say the Saints are worse, if that's your stance, if that's, if that's where you're coming from, if you're saying this roster is worse because of blank, okay, I, I, I can hear you. I can, I can listen to that. But I do not believe one can exist without you, the other. You cannot say they're not worse, but they're also not better. That's impossible. Taken here in the 2024 offseason, that the approach they took in the 2023 offseason was unsuccessful. And look, missing the playoffs for a third year in a row probably already told you that. You're going, well, yeah, duh, of course, Ross. I know, I know, I know. But let me explain. In, from 2022 into 2023, the Saints decided to retain Pete Carmichael as their offensive coordinator. I'm sorry to bring back Mistake. bad memories, but let's start there. When they did that, the first thing that I said was, what the Saints are telling you is that they believe that the personnel was the problem, not the coaching. This year going for... Okay, let me... Sort of. Sort of, kind of. They believe personnel was the problem, but they believe that developing the personnel in that bubble of the Sean Payton kind of philosophy was the answer. That went to the draft. Like We talked about that with draft picks of previous years. We were still drafting like we had Sean Payton. We were still drafting developmental, raw, diamonds in the rough kind of players because we believed if we had someone like Sean Payton, we could develop those players. That has changed, right? So... I do, I do agree with some of that, but it's more that they were trying to hold on to the philosophy and the culture that they believed was still there 
because of Sean Payton. For 2023 and the 2024, after effect, you know, going out and finding the new quarterback, after kind of rebuilding different plate pieces on the roster, making sort of bigger roster changes in 2023 than we have seen here in 2024. They now come into 2024 going, oh no, we have to redo the roster or we have to redo the coaching staff now. Yeah. So they spent that time revamping the roster, but not revamping their coaching staff, particularly on the offensive side of the football. They made some defensive coaching staff changes, defensive coordinator, all that, um, which was wise to go from two defensive coordinators to one defensive coordinator. Yes. But I mean, when Dennis Allen is your head coach, like what even is your defensive coordinator doing? You know, in 2024, they haven't made drastic changes on their roster outside of the ones that they were basically forced into making attrition leading to them departing players, leading to them having to fill holes, things like that. But I'd argue that there are still holes that they haven't addressed yet on this. Yeah, every team has holes for sure. But they also did bring in like, I mean, they did bring in players like Chase Young is that was a huge problem. Our pass rush was a huge issue. Our edge rush was a huge, glaring hole. We brought in Chase Young, 24 years old. We'll see how it goes. Like, we did try and address some problems. And if you look at the Saints roster, I've said this a million times, the actual roster, pretty solid. Like, you're going to replace Chris Olave? No. You're going to replace Alvin Kamara? No. You're going to replace Derek Carr? You just you just got Derek Carr. No. You're going to replace Marshawn Lattimore, Alante Taylor, Paulson, Adebo, Tyron Matthew? Like, no. These guys are legit starters. Legitimate starters. Okay? Demario Davis, you know, Pete Warner. Like, these guys are starters on a, a lot of different teams in the NFL. So this, this, like, bring in impactful changes and bring in whatever, like, that. they're really, we don't have a lot of room to do that. Yeah, you could bring in some superstar tight end. Where? Who is? Who is it? Is that? Was that even possible? No. It was maybe in the draft, I guess, if you bring in a Brock Bowers or whatever. But we we saw which where they went in the draft, in the draft, and they had to take Talise Fuaga. So, you know, and not to mention that they were salary cap restricted to where they really couldn't bring in these like huge, huge roster additions. This isn't Madden. Teams rarely do that. You look at a lot of teams in the NFL. Like, look at the, look at the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, look at teams like that. Look at the Buffalo Bills. You, you they, they don't take the off season and they say, "Hey, we're going to bring in like all these all pro players. We're going to bring in all these superstar players." If anything, the Bills shed. You know, with like Stephon Diggs and, and those issues. The Dallas Cowboys are the Dallas Cowboys. Is that one of those teams where it's like, man, they went and did all this stuff. They really improved the roster. No, they kind of they they got worse. You know, they lost Tony Pollard. They're 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 getting worse. Their roster's getting worse. So it's kind of a misnomer just to believe that every offseason you have to just like bring in all of these all of these new roster dishes. That that rarely happens. This roster. And instead of making the roster changes, the personnel changes, trying to boost the talent on the roster, they go with the coaching staff. Yeah, and which they was the revamp biggest problem. the coaching staff. That was the biggest problem. For good problem. reason. And they revamped yeah. the entire coaching staff with yes, the exception thank of God. Clancy Brown, when it comes to the major decision makers, position coaches, offensive coordinator, he's the only one that's a holdover. You got some offensive assistants, Jari Evans, all them that hung around, but coaching staff, offensive coordinator, position coach wise, Barone's the only one to hang around and for a good reason. So I think what the Saints are effectively doing here is a two year process of don't have the coaching staff, don't have the roster, go and get the roster in 2023. Then they get into 2024 and they go, okay, got the roster, maintain the roster or as much of the roster as you can, go get the coaching staff, especially yes. with Dennis Allen being so connected to the Kubiak family, all those other things. Like this was the perfect opportunity for them to go and get the offensive coordinator that they wanted in Clint Kubiak, who, you know, wouldn't have had the year with San Francisco if they were hired him into the. Let's say, let's say you did want to overhaul the roster. Let's say you did want to improve the roster. You can't do that until you have the coaching staff. You can't do that until you have a set foundation of your coaching staff. Because what are you getting? Who are you getting? What is the plan? What's the culture? What's the theme? What's the like? How how are you gonna? How do you even know what you're looking for if you don't have a scheme or a strategy or, or a coordinator or a coach? So the Saints had to do it this way, and the Saints have done this for 20 years, where they have their core group of guys. They believe in those core group of guys. They kick the can down the road, try and extend the window of those core group of guys. That's just how they do it. 
You know, like the core group of guys changes, sure. Like the Marquise Colston, Drew Brees, you know, Jimmy Graham changes into Drew Brees, Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas changes into Drew Brees, Alvin Kamara, Chris Olave changes into Derek Carr, Alvin Kamara, Chris Olave. You know, like they keep their core group of guys pretty, pretty stable. And they try and extend that group's window. Right now, we're in the window of Derek Carr, Alvin Kamara, Chris Olave, Marshawn Lattimore. Like, we're in that window. So there is no roster overhaul possible. It's just, and that's why they that's why they approach the salary cap the way they do. is because they believe if we can keep this group of guys together, then we can win. And they kick that can down the road, which is why they've been relevant for 20 years which is why they haven't had a season where they haven't won seven or more games in 15 years. The position last year, I don't even know if he was an OC candidate last year, right? So I don't even know if he was part of those conversations. So I think that that's what this tells us is that it tells us that the different approach and message from them from 2022 to 2023 was unsuccessful. And now they're having to do more here in 2024's offseason. So what will it lead to? Well, it hasn't led to an improved roster, but it has led to an improved coaching staff. So we'll get to that in a little bit about how the coaching staff can help to improve and how the Saints could still benefit their roster if they decided to, you know, get froggy and leap a little bit. But if we look at this position by position or position group by position group, I think it's hard to make arguments about the Saints making big improvements. So what I'm going to do, because I don't think so. We'll go, uh, I will allow him, let's go position by position, we'll, and we'll see. I know sometimes I'll say something like, this player has a lot of talent and could potentially push for a roster spot. And what people hear is, Oh, you're out here trying to say that he's the greatest tight end to ever play the game. No, 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 no. Like you're taking it from like 40 to 100 very, very quickly. So let me do it this way. If I look at the New Orleans Saints offensive line from 2023, starting at week okay. one, Trevor Penning, James Hurst. The offensive line definitely got worse for sure. We are not, there is no denying that. The offensive line has gotten worse. It's gotten younger. So we'll see. On paper, it's definitely gotten worse. It's Eric McCoy, Cesar Ruiz, Ryan Ramchick, right? James Hurst has since retired. <laughs> yeah. Trevor Penning was a question mark, all this other stuff. Yeah. Ryan Ramchick might medically retire. We'll see what happens. Yep. But in any case, with those five, let's give that a let's just give them a point value of 72 last season. Doesn't matter if we agree of or disagree. What? 72 out of 100? Let's just do a letter grade. The offensive line last year was a, a D. Let's just say they're a D. I would say this year, going into the season, they're probably an F, D, D, D minus, something like that. They're, they are worse, but they're, they were, it was a weak group last year. It's a weak group this year. Like that's, You're not going from a top 10 offensive line to the worst offensive line. You're going from a bad offensive line to a bad offensive line. Agree, anything like that. I, I don't even know if I agree with that, but I'm just going to give them a point value of 72. Then we flip that to this year, Trevor Penning at left tackle, big old question mark at left guard, Eric McCoy at center, Cesar Ruiz at right guard, and then Taliesi Fuango, who we expect to be the starter at right tackle if Ryan Ramchick is not ready to go, which yeah. at this point, it just doesn't look like Ryan Ramchick is going to be ready to go. Correct. I'd be shocked at this point if he, he starts, not, but we'll yeah. see. Can you say that they've improved to no. an 80? No. With a massive question mark at one of those positions? Can no, you, you say that they've improved to a 90? With no. Two Obviously question not. marks effectively at tackle, even though we feel really good about Taliesi Fuanga, he's a rookie. So if we put all rookies at the baseline of unknown, can you really say that they've made a marked improvement from where no, they were last not. year? I don't no. think you can. You can yep. make the argument that they went from 72 to 75. I don't know how, but you can no, make you that can't. argument. But that's not a marked improvement, right? I'm talking about them moving into a whole other letter grades worth of increased value here. Let's look at wide receiver. Okay. Lost Michael Thomas. Lost Keith Kirkwood, lost Lynn Bowden, brought in Cedric Wilson, Equinemius St. Brown, Stanley Morgan Jr., all, all through free agency, and then drafted Bub Means in the fifth round. Yeah. Then they retained Chris Olave, Rashid Shahid, A.T. Perry. So if we said that the wide receiver core last year was at an 82, okay. did they move to the 90s? I don't think... No, but you could say they moved to an 85. You could say that they've gotten better. You could say that they have developed. You can say that they're another year more cohesive. You could say that they have another year with Derek Carr. You could say that A.T. Perry developed. Chris Olave is getting more into his peak. You could say that Bud Means offers something that we didn't have before. You could say that they cleared salary cap with Michael Thomas's situation. You could, like, you could say that there was a lot of positives. You don't have to go from an 82 to a 90 to have improvement. Going from an 82 to an 85 is plenty enough. Like, you, you, 
you can absolutely say that the wide receiver core got better. And you can also say that just, just them having, I know I keep saying this, but you could say that, like, ju- how do you quantify, how do you quantify Chris Olave, a year of Chris Olave and Derek Carr having chemistry? Like, I would say that at the beginning of the season, they were at like a D on chemistry. I would say at the end of the year, they got much better, right? So how do you factor that? You, you have to factor that. And you cannot, I say this all the time with like ESPN and all these like really, really shallow statistics. If you just look at like passing yards or you just look at rushing yards or you look at stats like that, like it's not going to tell you the whole story. Same with this. Like you can't just say like a player added to the roster doesn't, isn't the only way to improve. It isn't the only way to look at progress. I think that's crazy. I mean, I think that's a horrible way to, I think it's a horrible way to to look at like roster additions and, and your team. It's like the the only way if you believe the only way to improve is to is to literally add players to the roster, then then you're just going to constantly be searching, constantly be adding, constantly be moving. You're never going to have like a team. Teams don't do that. You know, like no no team no team wins that way. You don't win. Like you don't win from just like constantly going from outside in. You can win by developing what you have in-house. And I think the Saints have done that. So I would say the wide receiver group has improved. So I, I disagree with this one. I think that they have. And that's even with me not looking at Michael Thomas as a big-time impact player, right? He's I'm not. looking at him as what he was in 2023. Or 2022. And so, or 2021. Uh, I don't know that you've made the big leap to step forward. Again, that's not necessarily a bad thing. The bad thing would be getting considerably worse. Quarterback's the same. Derek Carr, Derek Carr. You can argue about backup quarterbacks all you want. I'm not wasting my time. Derek Carr is the one on the field, was the one on the field last year. He'll be the one on the field this year. It's the same. No, it's not. Again, no, it's not. Derek Carr was hurt twice last year. Derek Carr went through multiple games where he was playing injured. What, what, how injured? I don't know. I'm not a medical professional. Not to mention, Derek Carr has another year with these players. He has another year in New Orleans. He has another year getting comfortable. You also have to factor in that it was Pete Carmichael and now Clint Kubiak. Like You have to factor in all these things. You can't. You cannot just say Derek Carr is there, thus it's the same. There are so many variables that change and flow and, and whatever, and all of them are flowing positively. Whether you think Derek Carr is good or not is really irrelevant. It, it, it doesn't matter what you think about him. It's just the situation. You know, in no way can you look at Derek Carr's situation and say that it's taking a step backwards. You have to say it's taking a step forward. So, again, I would say another positional group that should be improved from last year. Tight end. You, 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 all you have to do is look at the season. Derek Carr at the beginning of the season versus Derek Carr at the end of the season, we would all agree improved, whether you think Derek Carr is a good quarterback or not. You would say that Derek Carr weeks one through four was a worse version of Derek Carr in, than weeks uh, 14 through 17. We would all agree with that. So if Derek Carr improved being the same player with the same position groups, with the same roster, with the same coaches last year, if he improved within the season... Why would we not believe he can improve season season two season? It ends. You lost Jimmy Graham. You add Dallin Holker. Who like that is not? I, I'm 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 getting pissed off. I'll tell you that right now. My blood pressure is getting high. I'm I'm not I'm not happy about this right now. Again, like we're talking about roster, the fact that, and I don't, I'm not going to say that the tight end group has drastically improved, but you don't look at it and just say like. All right, let's check. Let's check on this. How do we improve here? Jimmy Graham, who doesn't matter, like Jimmy Graham. No offense to Jimmy Graham. I know he caught some touchdowns last year, but Jimmy Graham's impact is is nothing. Like Jimmy Graham can be anybody else, right? And and then an undrafted free agent doesn't matter at all either. You got to look at the roster as far as like who's starting, who's playing, all that. It's the same. So unless you think Jawan Johnson got worse, unless like unless you believe they've taken a step backwards, you don't look at. You don't look at like a four string player, a practice squad player, an undrafted player, and say, This is where I'm going to look to where I believe that position group has gotten negative or positive. It, it's 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 a non it's like a non impactful data point. Hard to say that you improved. You have mostly rem- same with the quarterback. Like the quarterback saying the quarterback position group, well, we brought in Nathan Peterman, thus whatever. Like that is a non impactful data point. That does not matter. To that position group. Remain the same. Uh, you might even make the argument that they got worse because the red zone threat of Jimmy Graham is no longer present. Sure. 
I don't think I would go that far, but sure. I would say it's the same. It's Running C backs stay the same, although, and maybe this is the one that I look at and go, okay, you might get better here. I help. I would swear. Okay. I th okay. He's going to, I think he's going to say, I was about to say, if he's going to talk about Kendra Miller, like the point, the, what you say with running back is that Alvin Kamara is not suspended. The Kendra Miller moves Damn the it. needle big time. Safety is effectively the same. Yes, you had Marcus May last. A healthy Kendra Miller doesn't move the needle big time. Like that, that is a just even, even. You could say like, okay, a healthy Kendra Miller is now your backup. So what does that equal? Does it equal Jamal Williams being your backup? If they do equal the same, then it, it, it doesn't move it one way or the other. What actually you need to look at first is who is your starting player in that position group and how are they affected? Our starting player in the position group, Alvin Kamara, was suspended last season. So, a year with, I mean, this is crazy. A year with Alvin Kamara not being suspended, positive. Plus, new offensive coordinator who who has an emphasis on running the ball. Plus, right? Like, all that is good. That is, that is going to affect the running game way more than a healthy Kendra Miller. The I like Clint Kubiak bringing in this zone run scheme and all of this and the new you know he wants to run the ball and how's he going to run the ball and that, that is what what changes the position group which is exactly what I'm talking about where you can't just say who's added who's removed and go from there you have to look at all the other variables you have to look at what's the scheme going to do what's the play calling going to be what what is Clint Kubiak how is that going to affect Clint Kubiak has way more of an effect on the the running back position group then if Kendra Miller is the backup versus Jamal Williams being the backup. Last year, but he played 17 games for you over the course of the last two seasons. You got better safety play out of both Jordan Howden and Jonathan Abram. They're back on the roster and they add Will Harris. You're effectively at the same place, but you've added Will Harris. Cornerback, if you trade away Marshawn Lattimore, you get worse, period. Yeah, but, he's, but, but you have not. So cornerback is a position group that has gotten better. You added Kool-Aid McKinstry. Right? Like Kool-Aid McKinstry. So, so far, we're at every single position group so far has gotten better besides offensive line, which has gotten worse, and tight end, which has stayed the same. McKinstry, we got a lot of faith in him, got a lot of faith in his game, all those other things, but rookie, unknown, right? Defensive line, effectively the same. You had Christian. No. You have Chase Young. So defensive line is not the same. And your young players have developed. And you would hope Cam Jordan is not hurt anymore. Jim Boyd, rookie, unknown. Linebacker, you got better. Linebacker, you got better. You added Willie Gay. What the hell? How, how did we just skip over the defensive line? We didn't talk about Chase Young at all. What the hell just happened? You, you don't think you're better adding Chase Young? You don't think you're better giving Brian Brzee and whoever else some time to develop? You don't think you're better with Cam Jordan, hopefully not injured for an entire season? What in the world? But that's kind of the... How, how, how did... Am I in some kind of dream? Am I in some kind of parallel dimension dream universe where we didn't add Chase Young? How the hell are we talking about defensive line? And the first thing we're talking about is Christian Boyd. The only place where you can really say, okay, there was a marked improvement, right? Because because where? Willie Gay, at the very least, increases or improves your third linebacker. At the most, improves on your second linebacker. Yeah, okay. Not a bad situation there. As for the defensive line, don't fully know yet. They add Christian Boyd in the draft, rookie, so he gets that unknown tag. And then Chase Young, neck surgery, neck procedure, uh, and everything like that, still kind of an unknown as well. But I, I think you get better there. I think that's a spot that you get better. Okay. Did y'all see what just happened? That was an edit. I think I think he forgot about Chase Young. I think he went back and said, oop, oop, I got I to gotta redo this one. I'm on a different level. There. So as I just look over these notes, I, I have a hard time saying that the New Orleans Saints have gotten better. Have okay, so let's look at the notes. Running back, better. Wide receiver, better. Quarterback, better. Uh, defensive line, better. Linebackers, better. Cornerback, secondary, better. Safety, better. Tight end, same. Offensive line, worse. I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. It's kind of seeming to me like we got a little better. I've improved, markedly improved. Um, maybe a little bit improved in certain areas, but uh, as a whole, kind of just remain the same. And again, that's not necessarily a bad thing because, and this is what I want to get to next, what the Saints told us this offseason, which is different from last offseason, is that, hey, the roster isn't the problem. It was the coaching staff.
And so then they went out and they changed the coaching staff, particularly over on the offensive side of the football. So let's break that down. How the New Orleans Saints get better with their new coaching staff and some moves that are still out there that I think that the Saints should consider making that could improve some of these positions, particularly on the offensive side of the football. We've got that coming up for you as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints. Bad thing would be walking backwards, taking a lot of steps backwards on your roster. I don't know that I can conceivably say that, convincingly say that the Saints have done that. Just like I can't convincingly say that their offensive line went from 72 to 80. I'm also not sure that their offensive line went from 72 down to 60. Now it might be down to 68 because they don't have a starting left guard and that's got to mean something. But Outside of that, all these other positions staying the same at quarterback, effectively staying the same at wide receiver, though losing Michael Thomas, but adding some other people that might be able to help to fill the volume of that role, which again, was not that much in 2023. Um, Tight end remaining the same, running backs effectively remaining the same, but you get the healthy Kendra Miller. We broke down the defense too. Like, I don't think anybody really, any unit really took major steps forward in terms of massive boost in improvement like a, you know, uh, like a T Higgins trade would have improved the wide receiver room or like a, um, uh, a, a drafting a, a Tyler Newbin would have improved the safety room or whatever. Like those are convincingly big moves, but the wouldn't. Oh boy. Oh boy. So for our rookies that we did draft and he Ross has said that he gives rookies an unknown, right? He gives rookies an unknown grade. Can't quantify, like Cooley McKinstry. He said, can't quantify, it's a rookie. But then he goes and says that if we drafted a safety, it would have improved the safety group. Kind of interesting. Because wouldn't that safety that we draft get an unknown grade as well? The losses that the Saints had this offseason as well were mostly rotational guys or guys that contributed yeah. on a no secondary bias. or tertiary level. No with the exception of Marcus May, but because of his injuries, suspensions, yeah. things like that, you, you didn't really he's notice that he was. That he's, you're is. not even probably going to notice that he's gone. And so... No. I don't think that the Saints really took many steps back either. And I think that that's important because as we highlighted, the Saints are saying something different about their roster in 2024 than they said about in 2023, but they're also saying something different about their coaching staff in 2024 than they said about 2023 in that they fired all of them, yeah, right? Like, there was a huge let's just problem. call it what it is. The Saints fired their entire offensive coaching staff with the exception of Clancy Brown from 2023. You don't just do that. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, actually, they didn't fire the entire group, right? Joel Thomas got another gig over in New York, all the other stuff. But for the most part, they moved on from everybody on their offensive coaching staff. And so that's where I think that the Saints are looking at improvements. I think what the Saints are saying now, which is different than what they were saying last year, forgive me if I'm repeating this, but I do want to make sure that I drive this home because I think that this is really like the big thing here, or amongst the big things here, is that what they're saying now is that it wasn't the roster's fault. And if you'll remember, as we went through like the entirety of the 2023 season, what was the mantra? The roster is talented, but the coaching staff hasn't taken advantage of that talent. That was the criticism for at least like the first 10 or so weeks of the season. And then everybody kind of started to get on. What the hell are we talking about? I mean, I'm, I'm really trying to find something here. In 2022, you looked at that roster, and what's the, what, do you, what did you think? You thought, man, if we had a quarterback, we might be all right. We're, we're doing kind of okay here with Andy Dalton. So what do they do? They go get a quarterback. They go get Derek Carr. 2023, you're looking at that team, and you're like, wow. Pete Carmichael, you, he couldn't make sense in a bank. Pete Carmichael, you, th- you, throw, you throw him in a locked room with a Rubik's Cube or a Sudoku puzzle, he ain't getting out. All right? So you look at that and you say, okay, we, we need to figure out the offensive situation. Sean Payton era is done. Let's, let's cut bait. Let's say, you know what? Let's find a new, th- new th- you know, thought leader here. Let's find a new philosophy. Let's find a new scheme. Let's find a new strategy. So they go and do that. What the hell? We're, we're trying to get better. The Saints are trying to get better. They've tr- showed that year after year. Of course they believe the roster is talented. The roster is talented. They're going to still try and get better at certain positions. The offensive line, the defensive line, and they're doing that. We drafted Talise Fuaga. We went and got Chase Young. Like this isn't a mystery. They're not. They're not. They're not. <laughs> they're not working in a mystery here. Like they're telling you, that they're showing you the moves that that we all understand. Like we all see this and we all believe. Yeah. Okay. 
Yep, we needed to figure out the quarterback. Boom, here's Derek Carr. Yep, we need to figure out the offensive co uh, coordinator. We need to figure out the offensive staff. Boom, here's a complete turnover. Spoiler alert, if this season the offensive line is struggling, we're going to go get an offensive... We're going to try to upgrade the offensive line. Last year, we, we could not rush the passer. Boom, we go sign Chase Young. But on the Der Well, I guess it was earlier than that that everybody started to get on the Derek Carr thing, but even... The, even there was like a, a like the Venn diagram was larger when it came to those criticizing Pete Carmichael in the system and those criticizing Derek Carr. And then eventually it kind of all became Derek Carr after a while. And I, I'll leave you to believe or, or decide what's fair, what's not fair. For me, everybody shares in the blame. But everybody kind of moved off the idea that it was the coaching staff. And I don't I never moved off of that because. I don't think that the Saints ever really figured it out. I think that the players figured it out, but I don't know that Pete Carmichael ever really figured it out. Figured out figure how out to nothing. use the offense and use the players on offense. Like, why was Rashid Shahid deployed out of the backfield, uh, uh, you know, once in week one and then like never again for the rest of the season? Why did we see motion against the New, New York, uh, New England Patriots, but then not see it again for a few weeks? Why do we see Taysom? Here's another thing. Let's say you believe Derek Carr is the worst quarterback in the NFL. Let's, let's say you believe the Saints cannot win with Derek Carr. The Saints don't have a choice but to win with Derek Carr while Derek Carr is under contract, especially in the first two seasons. You are not, last year, the Saints are not going to bench Derek Carr. This year, the Saints are not going to bench Derek Carr. If he gets hurt, something like that, that's, that's a totally different story. But you are going to live with him. You are going to play with him for two years. Then you can figure out the rest. If he's terrible this year and Spencer Rattler I mean, takes huge strides, maybe Spencer Rattler's the quarterback next year, and then we figure it out with Carr, whatever. But that, that is like a position group or an idea or philosophy or whatever that cannot be changed. It cannot be upgraded. It cannot be maneuvered. But once you sign a contract like that, with a, especially a quarterback, it just is what it is. So... Like that part of it, it's not even worth debating. It's not even worth talking about because you have him. He is the quarterback. He will be the quarterback. So arguing if he's good or not, or if he's top 10 or top 15 or top 32 or top 65 or whatever, doesn't matter. Like none of that is, none of that is, is important at all. Tim Hill utilized to, you know, uh, perfection in one game and then forgotten in the next game. Why do we see... Uh, runs on second and 10 after incomplete passes, all these other things, right? So I think that the thing that I want to highlight out of all of this is that the Saints have made a wise decision here and said, you know what? It's the scheme. It's the philosophy. Let's go and in, instead of trying to recapture old flames, let's go and get a scheme that works for today's players. And I'm not even talking about the idea of like going into modernity or going into the modern era of football, all these other things, all things that are the modern era of football or the 70s era of football, which are also the 60s era of football, which are also the 90s era of football. Like we just ebb and flow and like things become more popular, less popular than they become more popular later again and all these other things. Like the idea of getting into like the modern day NFL is like, it's a convoluted conversation. But it's a good talking piece and it's a good barrier to you, or not barrier, but barometer to utilize. What are you seeing in today's NFL and how do you capture that? Even though it's all just rehashes of older things and more traditional things. Um, but I'm glad that the Saints went that route. And so I think that that's the thing that they're looking at to say, okay, here's how the team improves in 2024. Keep the roster as intact as you can, which again, the Saints didn't have many big time departures. I didn't factor Andrus Pete, the loss of Andrus Pete into the offensive line because he didn't start week one, but he's another one of those losses, right? You got to make sure, I, I got to make sure I include him there. And so um, I, I think that that's the way that they find that is they try to keep the roster as intact as possible going for 2023 and 2024 because from 2022 to 2023, they said, oh, it's the roster. And then they fixed the roster. But then you didn't change the scheme, and then the roster performed the same way that the roster performed before in the same scheme. Shocker. It, the scheme didn't change, therefore the results did. didn't either. So now in 2024, you're hoping that the scheme change also brings the success. <clears throat> the Saints were better last year than they were the year before. Like, the roster was better. They did perform better, especially at the end of the season. The scheme was problematic. 
no doubt. But you can't, like I said, you kind of have to do like an A-B test where you got to figure out what's actually the problem. After Peyton leaves, they give Carmichael and co. a year to figure things out. But they obviously didn't have the quarterback. They thought it was going to be Jameis Winston. That that did not work out, right? Didn't work out for two years. So then they thought, well, it's kind of un- it's kind of unfair to judge this new- this coaching staff. It's kind of unfair to judge them if we're rotating Andy Dalton, Jameis Winston, Trevor Simeon, whoever else. So then it's like, all right, let's see what they can do with the quarterback. So they go get Derek Carr. Then they see the same issues with the coaching staff, same questionable play calling and all that, and they say, okay. We now know, because we've done this A-B test, we now know it's the coach. We now know it's the philosophy. We now know it's the scheme. Let's change that. And so now they're going to try that? Like, this is a very normal flow of how teams build their rosters and make decisions. And again, this is a mostly offensive conversation because the Saints' defense is stellar. Like, it's still good. Like, they have to improve as a run defense, sure, but keeping points off the board. You know, it's kind of funny. Like last year, I believe DVOA had the Saints defense ranked like 13th in the NFL. They had their offense ranked 17th in the NFL. So the idea that like the defense is absolutely elite, super stellar, but the offense is ass, like that's that's not true either. The offense wasn't, I mean, obviously 17th is not something you want to aspire to be, but 17 and 13 is not that different. You know, like, and that's kind of my argument for why when people say the Saints were awful last year and are going to be awful this year. So you're talking about a nine-win team with a top 15 defense and a, and a top 20, almost top 15 offense. Like you get a little bit better on both sides of the ball. You know, you go from 13 and 17 to 10 and 15. Uh, if you told me a, if you told me a nine-win team is going to all of a sudden have a top 10 defense and a top 15 offense, like. That sounds like improvement to me. Or it has to be the number one priority. And so the passing defense being good has to be, uh, you know, a big focus. And so we'll see if they can improve the run defense. But uh, even if they can't and they hit the 20s, the 15s again, they should still be uh, a top 10 defense. We said that last year. That ended up being the case. They were a top 10 defense last year. Now, I do think that the Saints have other moves that they could make that will still improve their, their team. I maintain that going out and signing Dalton Reisner would immediately make this team's offensive line better. Now, not it, it, sorry, let me let me be more specific. Let me be more specific. Because making your offensive line better than it is right now, not a statement. But I think that adding Dalton Reisner gives you the potential to make your offensive line better than it was last year. Because All right, I look, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm you know, I'm always upfront and per- I'm always transparent. Who the f- is Dalton Reisner? I had to go look it up. I mean, no, I had to go look it up. This is Dalton Reisner. He's 28. He's a guard, free agent, 2023 player grade from PFF. He was 57, 57.1, which is pretty bad. He was, I mean, who is this guy? This is who, like, 60, I mean, who, who, this is who we think would like really positively impact the season? Like this, this guy, this guy right here, Dalton Reisner, PFF's never given him above like a 70. This cat, this, after 50 minutes of talking, We've landed on this guy as who would positively impact the roster and who would make a real difference? Dalton Reisner? Just go to Lowe's, buy a, buy a prop-up mailbox, get some concrete blocks, and put that at left guard. This guy's just a body. Maybe I'm just on a whole different level. But if... If we're thinking like if, if we're thinking of what the Saints need, what the Saints truly need is Dalton Reisner. Wow. Wow. Trevor Penning should be better in 2024 than he was in 2023. That's just how time works. Um uh, Talia Sefuanga is probably a better option right now than 2024's version of Ryan Ramchek that's dealing with this stuff that has the medical question marks, it's reportedly lost weight, all these other things. Fuang is probably just a better option right now. 
Not a better option 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, but probably a better option now. Yeah. So Dalton Reisner makes your offensive line better because I think that he would be better than James Hurst. I think he would be better than Andrus Pete, the left guard version of Andrus Pete before he reached his final Frieza form out there on at left tackle. Uh, I still Maybe. think that that ends I mean, up boosting what you can be. And he- I'll tell you this, if Dalton Reisner, I mean, no hate to Dalton Reisner. But if Dal if Dalton Reisner is like if you if 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 he makes your team better or if he's impactful at all, like I mean you might be the worst team in the NFL. If Dalton Reisner walks into a locker room and you're like, thank God Dalton Reisner is here, now we got a shot at the NFC South. I mean, what in the world? I mean, I would assume like the only place Dalton Reisner is getting like recognized is at the is at the Reisner family Christmas when he walks in the front door and someone says, "Oh, it's up Dalton's here." But beyond that, like, I, I got bad news for you. <laughs> like, bringing in a D minus guard, a C plus guard, a C minus like who cares? I will say. That, that's been what I've been saying to do with the offensive line, where you just go find your Dalton Reisners or go find who the hell ever. Don't waste a first-round pick. Don't waste a whatever pick. Like Just go get these cats. Let them you know, stand there and try and figure things out. Like Just rotate guys in, rotate guys out. But that's a far cry from saying, spending 50 minutes saying that the Saints have not – gotten better the saints haven't done anything the roster is still whatever it is the roster is this the roster is that and then to say but i do have the answer the answer to improving the team is dalton reisner man he's got familiarity with the scheme offensive coordinator all that the other place that i think that you can make an improvement is still at wide receiver you could do that with maybe hunter renfro but boy are the options at wide receiver now low with tyler tyler boyd off the i think wide receiver is fine i mean i don't think i mean i think it's an all right group I think if you go, you know, Chris Olave is a superstar top level wide receiver. He's a top 10 kind of guy. And then if you drop down and you're, you know, figuring out, Rashid Shahid's been really good when utilized correctly. Is he a true number two? I don't know about that. A.T. Perry, he was good in spots last year. I think the wide receiver room could be worse. I don't think it's like one of the best rooms, but I don't, I don't think it's bad either. And that's not, even, that's not even factoring in what we'll see out above me. So I don't think Hunter Renfro makes it any better. He's a He's a body, I guess. He's like a... You know, I guess you could factor in how much him and Derek are, have, have chemistry, but as far as like physically what he can do on the field, I don't know if he's, you know, he, he's he's really moving the needle. Off the market, you trade for Traylon Burks. I don't know if that makes your team better. No. I think he's a massive question mark hell? too. So I don't know, but maybe that's another place where you can go out there and find some improvement. But you do those two things. You do one of those two things. You improve the offensive line. You add another veteran there, whatever. That's not just Shane Lemieux and Justin Heron. We'll see what happens with them. Don't get me wrong. But man, you go out there and find a guy that's a bona fide starter at left guard. Then all of a sudden, yeah, okay, we can have a conversation about how not only did the offensive coaching staff in- uh, improve, but the offensive line improved, and therefore the offense should be better. But right now, you're relying on the scheme. Very much relying on the scheme, which is a different message than what the Saints sent last year. We'll see if it all comes together for them. Coming up next, what are you looking for in rookie mini camps? Well, we are not going to be talking about rookie minicamp. I'll tell you this right now. If I was the GM of the Saints and someone walked into my office and was like, listen, coach, we need to get Dalton Reiser and Hunter Renfro and we'll be set, I'd say get the hell out of my office. I'd say turn around and get out of my office. Don't ever, don't ever bring that back in here again. Don't ever come back in here with some with something like that. Don't don't ever don't even take the elevator down. I want you to walk down the steps. I want you to walk down the stairs. I want you to take 20 floors. Think about what you've done. Think about what you just said to me. You came in here. I'm dr- trying to drink a cup of coffee early morning. And you're coming in here talking about Dalton Reiser and Hunter Renfro. Get get the hell out. Get out of my face. Wow. I am glad we reacted to this video. This is a great choice. So much appreciated. Again, guys, long video, but what's better than a nice long video? Are you kidding me? On a Friday, we're dropping this thing. So TGIF, ladies and gentlemen, remember the Reddit page down below. Get on involved. Follow it. Post on it. Do what you got to do. Drop videos on there. I'll be checking it uh, to try and find you know good video ideas, good good all that stuff. Uh, tell your friends. Tell your families. Uh, whatnot. Also, the website. I think it's called Speakeasy. I hope I hope I'm right. Speak some. It speaks something. I got to check this after this video. But 
we want I want I want to do the voicemail thing. It'd be fun. It'd be a lot of fun. Uh, so you know, if you're inclined to do that, and you want to pop in, click that link and record something, and we'll start we'll start pulling we'll start pulling video. If we get enough, we might do a voicemail a day. We may do a video where it's nothing but voicemails. Who even knows? I might react to y'all's voicemails. You can make it about the Saints. You can make it about the NFL. It can be a question. It can be about me writing as a crime reporter at the Pulitzer Prize winning newspaper. It can be about my, any, any of that stuff. It can be about just my thoughts on content, my thoughts on media. It can be my thoughts on uh, relationship advice. It can be my thoughts on you know whatever, man versus bear, anything, okay? Anything at all, totally no holds barred. Make sure to ask in the link below. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. This was a fun one. I enjoyed it. Hope you all enjoyed it as well. I will see you in the next video.